There are very few firearms that are as immediately identifiable, as iconic as the Gatling gun. A firearm that crosses all lanes and all barriers. You don't even have to be interested in guns. For a matter of fact, you can dislike guns and you're probably going to know what a Gatling gun is. And after this video, hopefully, we're gonna both know a little bit more about it than we did at the beginning. Now, there are several different variations of, of the Gatling gun. It's not just one single thing. Uh, but we're going to be focusing primarily on the 1883, a little bit on the 1874. Both the battery guns, uh, like this, where you have 10 exposed exterior barrels, uh, and the Navy variation, which is a brass version also with 10 barrels, also chambered in 4570, but the barrels are encased inside of a brass extension to the receiver. So the Gatling gun was named after Dr. Richard Gatling. He lived from 1818 to 1903, and uh, the gun bears his name, the Gatling gun. Uh, this wasn't his original or first interest either. His, his interest, as well as being a doctor, um, was an interest in round things, things that, that worked because they're round. So his, uh, his early interests included projects on ship or boat propellers uh, and bicycle wheels and gearboxes. And, and that kind of makes sense when you look at, at the, the round shape of so many of the parts on the Gatling gun. If you think of where firearms were technologically at the time, we didn't even have cased ammunition. The vast majority of our firearms uh, were muzzle loaded, loaded at the muzzle. So the early Gatling guns were designed with multiple uh, chambers, uh, little, little boxes that would run through the mechanism of the gun, functioning much like it does today uh, outwardly, but these little chambers would be loaded with the powder, uh, with the patch, and with the ball, and they would be cycled through the gun where the, where the empty casings fall out of the guns today. On the early guns, the, that entire chamber section would fall out. So men, uh, the A-gunners or other people in this Gatling battery, would pick them up, reload them, and then, and then load them back in the feed mechanism to continue to run through the gun. Fortunately, it was very soon thereafter that that cased ammunition became a thing. Ammo that has a brass casing, a projectile, with the powder and the primer mechanism on board. So Dr. Gatling converted all of the firearms to use this new cased ammunition. Now you'll see a couple different feeding mechanisms for the Gatling guns, uh, but the two most popular are the Bruce feed. And that is a long stick where casings would be inserted and they would drop down into the gun by gravity. The other is the Ackley positive feed system, which people refer to as the drum. And the way this works is really cool, and we're going to take a closer look at it. With modern firearms, the drum magazine would allow you to fire more than the stick magazine, or in this case the Bruce feed. But because soldiers were able to put more rounds in this mechanism and add them to the stick, as it would run out or as it would run low, this type of feed could be never ending. If you had the right support, you could have people dropping ammo into the system just as fast as the person firing it could be behind it running the crank. The ammo was loaded into the top and then the slot in the casing would coincide with these two slots in the Bruce feed. If one side were empty, you could simply switch to the other side and continue firing and then switch it back just as easily. Now while the Bruce feed mechanism, the stick, utilized gravity to feed it, the Ackley positive feed actually works on a gear mechanism which coincides with the gun itself. So the drum is always running at the same speed that the person operating the gun is cranking it at. The head spacing on a Gatling is all done at once. All of the barrels are head spaced together as a group. On some of the guns, they're done up here in the front where they all move as one single block. On some of the other guns, they're head spaced in the rear. But either way, they're all head spaced together as one single unit. And this may be a surprise to some people, uh, but this was a very early striker fire type of system. So uh, Gaston Glock didn't have anything on Dr. Gatling when it came to the striker fire mechanism. Um, 
The way that this gun works is there is a rail inside of the circular receiver and all of the bolts ride on that rail in a circular motion and moving front to back as they go through their cycle. When they get to a certain point, the striker portion of the firing pin actually gets caught in a separate slot and, re and retained rearward. When it gets to its firing portion, when it's at the right position, it drops from that slot and, and the pin moves forward and it's allowed to fire. Very, very similar to the striker fire mechanisms used in modern pistols today. These early original guns had a crank that was utilized to the side. So you had motion that was going in this direction that had to be converted to this direction. So there had to be a gear change and that's another reason this box is so big in and around the receiver. Because of the direction change, you also utilized a reduction gear to give the operator the ability to crank the firearm and not be bogged down with all of the other things that could be doing it, such as not feeding correctly or a dirty chamber or dirty ammunition. So the firing speed of the gun was directly affected by the reduction gear in the back. The later guns, uh, you'll see referred to as the bulldog style guns, instead of having a crank on the side, it cranked to the rear and it was moving in exactly the same direction that the barrels were. So one full cycle by the handle gave you one full cycle of the barrels, so it was one to one. With a firearm like this, a battery gun, you might get three or four barrels that will fire on a complete revolution. With the Bulldog models, when you're cranking in the same direction, you're going to get, if it were a 10 barrel gun, you would get 10 barrels to fire because the crank is always in the same relationship to the barrels, no matter where it is on the cycle. There's a lot of speculation about whether uh, bolts were interchangeable. Again, we have 10 bolts in a gun like this. I've had people that spend a lot of time with Gatlings tell me, yes, they were interchangeable, uh, but I found that with every single one I've ever looked inside of, these 10 bolts all have a common number, and that aligns with the serial number of the firearm, and it also has a chamber number, which aligns with the barrel. So you're gonna have barrel number one and bolt number one through, in this case of the battery guns, bolt number 10 through barrel number 10.
bit more. Perfect. Perfect. Before we replace the last bolt, this is gonna be the, the last one in the assembly. I wanna show you how the firing mechanism actually works. There is a band in here that corresponds with this tooth and another that corresponds with your firing pin. As it travels closer to the chamber, the bolt travels to the front, the pin is retained, and when it gets to the end of its travel, the slot runs out, so the bolt drops down and the pin is able to drop forward out of it. So what we have is something really similar to a striker fire. Some might compare it to a Glock. Um, and that's really the essence of how it works. We, the bolts are traveling in this direction and they're traveling front to rear at the same time. And it fires at about the five o'clock position. All right, move it to that last one. That's it, that's what makes the Gatling gun tick. So how cool is that? A short tour, not only outwardly, but looking at the inside of the Gatling gun to see how this thing works. Now before you say it, absolutely, there will be live fire included. It's just not gonna happen today. I'll upload some live fire videos as a standalone and I'll connect them to this video. Hopefully we'll have it done within a week from this video going up. Hopefully we all have a little bit better understanding of how a Gatling gun works. These particular guns are going up for auction at uh, Poulin's Auction House. And I'll have some information if the YouTube gods will let me uh, below this video. If not, it won't be too hard to find. Uh, but some of these guns will be going up to auction at the spring event and at the fall event that they have. And uh, we're very fortunate that they let us come inside and really get a good close up personal look at some of this stuff that we may otherwise not have access to. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already and make sure that you hit the notification bell so you'll know when we upload a new video. You can get a good look at some of the things we're doing behind the scenes over at Patreon and you can find our videos both on Full30 and on YouTube. And for most of the normal day-to-day -day stuff, Facebook is probably the best place to go at facebook.com slash guntestbids. Till next time, have fun and be safe. Thank you.